addressing the South Africa problem. That sounds ominous. All right, let's check this out. You know? Respect to Google. Well, why does he have it? Okay, this is in literal living memory. This isn't something that happened 150 years ago. It's literally less than 30 years ago. Uh -huh. How else can it be? It was enforced through racism. Uh -huh. So in order for that wrong to be undone, it has to be decolonized. That requires taking the land, giving the power and autonomy back to black people. Otherwise, in this you know communistic South African utopia, there will be enormous oversight by white people who've experienced decades of top pecking order privilege. True. What do I really mean when I say oversight? Well, it might be- Couldn't, couldn't that- couldn't that just be an economic thing? Does he think that that's not economic? If the problem Does he elaborate? is that white people have a dis... First of all, the majority of the land you're referring to is not owned by all the white South Africans. It's probably owned by like the top 1% of... No, it's white South Africans are overwhelmingly rich. So it says here, for example, data made available by CNN presented that white South Africans earn nearly three times the income of black South Africans. Still, even after the end of apartheid, do you know why that is? It's not because they have like an innate whiteness or something. It's because of the economic resources that they have from apartheid. And why do they have those economic resources? It's because they were white. It's because they created... It's not, well, it's not because literally because their skin is white so they magically get economic resources. It's because they created a country that economically privileged white people in both law and practice in every way possible. That's why, right? So when Vosch says, couldn't this just be economic? It literally is economic. Because in South Africa, due to the system that these people created, like your economic status was essentially synonymous with your skin color. White South Africans. Like this, for some reason, it makes him uncomfortable. So he's so just... He's incredibly fucking, um, like, allergic to just saying that, even when it's so obvious. Couldn't we just seize land based on, like, economic divides? That way we wouldn't have to, like, deport anyone? And then you'd end up seizing land from 99.9% .9 of white people, and you know, 99.9% .9 white people anyway, and no one said anything about deporting. You're inserting that into the conversation. Or so, like... Even if we do what Walsh is saying here is some sort of better alternative, it would still end up happening along almost, almost entirely racial lines, not because anyone's doing it intentionally, but because that's just how things are based on the material history of South Africa. And I guarantee you, he would still complain about that and spread white genocide talking points about it. He's clearly out of his depth here. He's fumbling over his lines. He doesn't know what he's, what's going on. Do any genocides? We could just assign economic reallocation, which would invariably address like the huge, like th the vast majority of white South Africans are not participatory in this huge what? economic despair. The vast majority of white South Africans were direct participants in apartheid and still directly uphold its legacy. Like this is like arguing that the, that the bourgeoisie do not directly participate in the oppression of the proletariat. Obviously they fucking do. There's no difference here because what we're talking about here are people who are overwhelmingly like of the petit bourgeois, bourgeois class because of the privileges that were granted to them due to their race. And we're talking about taking those those class privileges away from them, and Walsh just has to drag his Walsh just has to drag his feet. Through the enforcement of some direct policy they have control over, it, they, they just happen to be born in the neighborhood that had more money. Why did the neighborhood have have more money? Why did it have more money, Walsh? It's so it's so funny how like he just suddenly stops understanding systemic issues when they're being when we're talking about them in the context of decolonization. Suddenly systemic, systemic racism doesn't exist. As were you, bad mouse. Suddenly Vosh is a class reductionist. It's fucking hilarious. British person. No, this isn't class reductionism. Racism- It literally is class reductionism. Needs to be tackled too, but- Racism in South Africa especially, but in any settler colonial state, is intrinsically linked with class. You probably shouldn't deport six million white people. No one said that you should deport six million white people. What you're arguing against here is the appropriation of land that they, that they stole from black people, right? That's another thing, right? If you steal land from the black people who owned it before you and you, you fail on it and you don't happen to get extremely rich on it, it's still not your land. You still stole it, right? If your grandpa stole a painting like when the Nazis were ransacking art all across Europe, and, and now you, you hold it, 
That's, that painting isn't, still isn't yours, okay? Just because you didn't directly steal it yourself. It's not now magically yours. It's still a stolen painting that needs to be returned to its original owners or the descendants of its original owners. Same principle being applied here. Doesn't matter if, if you failed to turn the land that you stole into like economic success for yourself. It's still stolen land. That, w that would be bad, you know? That would- Vorsh is just like, he's fumbling. He doesn't, he doesn't really know what to say. Because he clearly doesn't understand anything about South, South Africa. Well, he doesn't understand anything about anything, but especially not South Africa. So we're just like saying, um, deporting six million people, bad, when no one's talking about that. Kind of suck a little bit, I think, in my opinion. It's difficult for you to understand if you don't live outside of America, but a lot mm -hmm. of people have this highly Americanized outlook on things. It's not, you know, necessarily that Ian supports exceptionalism or anything, ago. but he still definitely harbors that certain integral American-centric outlook. I remember exactly. when he was God so damn, avidly right. defending, you know, this vote blue no matter who, he was uh -huh. literally saying stuff like, stop talking about American politics when you don't even live here. You know, you don't get to true. speak for issues that don't affect you. True. And I was like, wow. He's like just saying true about that. Like the US is the world's principal empire. Its politics affect absolutely everyone pervasively. And this is the sort of mentality that led Vosh to, to like essentially say to Hakim, like, shut up about our politics. You don't live here. When Hakim is literally in an Iraqi, whose house was literally bombed by the USA when he was a kid. Unbelievable. Wow. America, you are not Vietnam or Costa Rica. You are the single most powerful country for nearly a hundred years. The it's funny that he's saying this when the people I was arguing with were the ones enabling the idea that Trump should get another term because they were too edgy and cool to say that Biden would be preferable to Trump. Um, we've been over this so fucking much. Like, you can just look at Biden right now. Like, the only really good thing that Biden's done, foreign policy-wise, is the withdrawal from Afghanistan, which Trump had already planned. Apart from that, there's really nothing, nothing different going on there. So, for the rest of us, nothing's changed, bud. Your, your fucking incessant campaign for the Democrats has done nothing. And now, you're here, again arguing against non-Americans, talking about the politics of a country that intimately affects their everyday lives. They were, they were, th this photo that you're representing America with right here is much more representative of the, uh, the Republican platform, both domestically and foreign. Uh, that is literally just not true. Democrat platform, that's for sure. Though this does- These people could never, could never practically argue this. It does look more like Biden than Trump, so I guess- They asserted, um, you know, completely without substance, and they never, ever, ever even try to show it. Yes, that's 50-50, right? This is about Sean. Yeah, Sean was getting called out from a lot of people about this too. Sean's like horrible takes on Twitter. Sean was proven right. Like Biden did absolutely nothing that he promised. And in regards to foreign policy, he's exactly the same. Like you have the, what's with the infrastructure bill that's essentially nothing that's been destroyed. And you know, they're, they're trying to conveniently blame two entire like, democratic politicians for it when obviously they could have they could implement it if they really wanted to it's just a convenient excuse and Vosh he doesn't he doesn't know what he's talking about he doesn't have any way to practically engage with the evidence just empty assertions democrats good republicans bad the funny thing is is that sean on twitter was a bernie or buster he was a cunt about it too he was like well i'm not voting anyway am i because i'm british aren't i aye, aye, aye. but uh then he made a youtube video after biden won uh, about how bad it would have been if Trump could have continued his patriotic education policies if he had gotten a second term. And it's like, well, f thank you. Patriotic education policies. What the fuck does that even mean? Did you see the fucking CRT governor just won in Virginia? Sean, I agree. I mean, the US it already has patriotic education. Vosh specifically defended. Vosh defended the US education system and its nationalistic indoctrination. Indoctrinate people in regards to, the, to nationalism, its history, etc. when it obviously does. Would have been really fucking bad if he could have gotten to do that and educate an entire generation of young Americans using even more propagandistic information than what we do. Ah, so now it is propagandistic. No. Thank you. I agree. Thank you very much. You're welcome, by the way. World, your well, this guy is like he has so little, he has to bring up Sean and just divert from responding Answers to what's actually to being you. said. The world is changed by you. You are not some Based. little nation somewhere with a unique identity that bigger nations like to fetishize and demonize. You are the identity of the world. 
So when you Sounds scold like this guy's people pretty America-centric. for talking about American issues, even though they live outside, this he's just so without substance. He's an unthinking individual who has nothing but like the first insult that comes to mind. This is the kind of centric thinking I'm talking about. You're literally number one, and yet you act like you're Let's just any go! other country. Look at this fucking moron. He is utterly devoid of original intellectual thought, of critical thought, of the ability to engage. Like, just look at this. He, he, I don't even need to say anything. This is has level at this point. Now, think about that's that's the that's the Americanized part of your identity. Let's now, go. think about how the white part. We have someone like undertaking a very accurate analysis of American exceptionalism and of the influence that America has on the rest of the world. And all that this fucking guy has to say about it is, let's go, yeah, America. And imagine being one of the people who watches this and thinks that like, this guy is, is making a good response that makes sense. Like, of your identity might overlook the experiences of BME people. And of course, yes, before anyone says anything, there are some people who go too far with this and just make another dogma out of it. You know, festering their opinion in America, not based on its history, but just on the fact that it is America. And then- Ah, oh, come on, man. You can't talk down on Max Blumenthal. Two birds of the same feather. Are you really- If I got you two in a room, would you really disagree on that much? God, Walsh is so fucking dumb. I'm pretty sure he's pretending to be drunk here. Which is a thing that he apparently does, like pretend to be drunk stream. If 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 he could ever be more cringe than he already is, there you go. It's just like haha, epic gotcha, epic gotcha, epic gotcha. Come on, man. Haha, <laughs> nice one, I'd dude. I'd love to see these guys. I would love to see like tanky types argue with gray zone types. That's what. That's the the. I'd love to see Vorsh argue with me. Just imagine Vorsh trying to talk about South Africa and de and decolonization with someone who's not just gonna let him walk all over them with his fucking ridiculous gotchas. And his incredibly stupid framing of the conversation is like some sort of debate on whether genocide is good or not. I literally met, I've messaged him on Discord telling him, come debate, but he's scared. The fraction, you know, that's the, the, the fracturing that I want to see. Um, You're going to respond? Right, I'm just hating no. or liking something based on America's stance. Uh, and that's just a, a really flawed outlook. You are not going to just use that as a cover to ignore the true reality of American chauvinism. That what? is very much a current that? in leftist circles as well. Are we doing that? Just in case anyone's, you know, wondering, I think the same for Britain as well. Okay, we, we like to hide ourselves by saying, you know, oh, America's worse and all that. But the reality is, you know, we're pretty much just as bad. We're just, you know, runner up. I think it's very uh, psychologically interesting how consistently he's interested in apologizing. You know what I mean? Like nothing what? about this video is about It's always this like apologism um, implicit. Like he's very, very afraid of being called out. What? It's just like a psychoanalysis by like a mid twenties guy who has no fucking idea what he's talking about on anything. Like everything that Bad Mouse is saying here has been completely grounded in material reality. You know, this is some random apologism. He just actually explicitly said, he explicitly put a tweet on the screen of a guy saying that white people need to stop apologizing because it's cringe. This tweet here, I'll read it out. So many Euro whites get high on decolonial theory and use it to say shit like Europeans don't have spirituality or culture. Literally the most empty headed take possible. Give yourselves some credit. People of color don't want you to prostrate yourselves to us. We just want our nations back. And Vorsch then goes on to say the complete opposite of what Bad Mouse is saying here. Like he's He's doing this like weird, like performative white person, like prostrating, apologizing. That's not, it's literally the opposite. He, this tweet is here. He's endorsing it. He's saying this tweet is correct and that people shouldn't do what Vos is, Vos is trying to say that he's doing here. These people do not, cannot recognize the material analysis when they see it. Vos especially. Um, implicit, like he's very, very afraid of being called out. Um... I, I think for being- He literally just said that shit is stupid. That people shouldn't do it by showing a tweet that he's clearly endorsing of someone saying exactly that. For being reactionary or not woke enough or whatever. It's very strange. Just on a similar topic, yeah, Welsh independence, go for it. All right, if that's what you want, if that's what you people want, go for it. The old thing about, you know, the Welsh-English union is that yes, it is a union. I don't care about the Welsh. I don't care about, the the care about one. Hmm, England. Very on topic, eh? I don't really know too uh -huh, much about the Cornish. Funny. I would have figured as far as homogeneity went, they're basically English at this point. I don't, uh, but I'm happy to be proved wrong. I do Obviously, not let me Ingr reiterate, you, know, you could have a little debate about reactionary practices within your group or your movement. Okay, Why are you many, responding right, to YouTube comments? You first YouTube and foremost comments. have to have that baseline that each nation has its own I, right to self-determination. They're okay, YouTube that's comments. That's your starting point. Then
Isn't Walsh's entire channel like based around Twitter drama and YouTube comment drama? Give me a break. You can go further into it. Nobody's going to cancel you for criticizing aspects of Plaid Cumbria or the SNP. Just stop having a Come. crass take on that fundamental point. I noticed that some people were a little bit confused about the tribe no, analogy. No, stop! It's explaining basically tweets. why. Like, he's just like, you're responding to tweets. Do you not see how this is relevant to the, the discussion? Like, responding to people who are making arguments and points that contradict yours. This is what a discussion is, Wash. I know that you're not really up to speed on this because all that you're capable of is saying, just genocide, it's genocide, you're just like Praise Nazis. Praise to Allah. Like, he's specifically using these as a spring of to talk about the point. Walsh doesn't understand this because he's never honestly discussed anything in his entire life. We can say North Americans sleep on stolen land, but British people do not. He's so fucking dumb. In the land back discussion, some like to bring up, as Ian partly did, well, you know, you know, all people fought against one another in the past. American Indians fought against one another. You know, they enslaved each other. Uh, what, what, what do we do? Do we just go back to the very first people and then give them the land? How are we? So here's a question, guys. Do you think that he has an answer to this question? I like that he's throwing the up answer to the question. I watched his first video. The answer to the question was specifically in his first video. He's talking about settler colonialism in terms of the settler colonial societal relation, which is like, you know, one group immediately supplanting the other group and setting up what is specifically a settler colonial relation where there's like this complete and total domination, generally not just of one group, but of many different groups. Like what unites the indigenous people of North America, for example, as the indigenous people of North America is not specifically that they they happened to be there before the Europeans came. It's that they've all been oppressed in very similar ways by the Europeans. They've been um, sort of put onto the oppressed side of the settler colonial societal relation of settler colonial society through like a shared experience of being dispossessed by the same group. They've been put into sort of the same, a very, you could call it a class position, but it's obviously not class in the Marxist sense, but like into the same sort of material group where all of them have had their land stolen and they've all been oppressed in very similar ways. Like, it's not like, oh, you own this land because, you know, you don't own this land because someone, you know, you technically you took it from these people 500 years before you, blah, blah, blah. The thing is here, these are, these are extant groups that still exist today, okay? We're not talking about people who don't meaningfully exist anymore, who were... Uh, like absorbed by other groups a thousand years ago or whatever. We're talking about people whose land was stolen from them a couple hundred years ago at most, and who have continuously been oppressed since then as easily identifiable, still extant groups who have maintained a constant claim to the land that was stolen from them the, this entire time. It's a very easy to answer, que answer question, but Vorsch here somehow thinks it's a gotcha, even though Bad Mouse already outlined what I just said almost exactly in his original video. And Vorsch cannot imagine a response to this. He thinks he has a gotcha here, because well, he's never thought about it, even though it's literally been explained to him in a video that he's watched before. Stone Toss comic to associate me with a Nazi, but in, in reality, unironic Stone Toss. Well, he's, he's associating me with Stone Toss, um, as if the yes. only person who could- Exactly, this is, this is your argument. You're, many of your arguments are the same as Nazis. The white South African oppression argument, the idea of white genocide, the idea of South African white farmer genocide if there was appropriation of their lands. So many of your arguments are the same as the arguments that Nazis make. So associating you with a Nazi once more is not only fair, but very warranted, especially because you try to associate people with Nazis at every, at every turn, especially on this specific question of decolonization. You are on the side of the Nazis when it comes to decolonization. You are on their side, unequivocally on their side. You can't get mad when people associate you with Nazis, with fascists, when they agree with you on this wholeheartedly, not just with your overarching goal regarding decolonization, but with the specific arguments that you use against it. They agree with you 100%. That's why you get to be associated with Nazis. Very simple. Point out that the whole, like, this land was stolen argument could sort of cyclically recede back an in infinite number of tribes until eventually you land up at like primordial tribes. humans clubbing each other with rocks. Literally just like the dumbest, like 12 year old argument you could possibly imagine that I literally ref I refuted before he even tried to elaborate um, on it. But let's see if he has an answer. Let's go. You're gonna do that. You know, why don't we just give reparations to the Babylonians? And that's true. It wasn't just all peace. Babylonians don't exist. That's how, that's why you don't give reparations to the Babylonians. They literally don't exist. 
successful. It was violent. I'm very sure it was. We can't change the past, but okay. we can change what is happening today. Okay. What are the antagonisms of today? And Indian nations still exist. They're still uh -huh. dispossessed. The injustice is still alive. It's like this, the same argument, though a bit simplified from what I said, I think, but it's more impactful that way, right? You see Vorshi like kind of realizing that he just got completely destroyed. He's not going to have anything coherent to say to this. Just watch. In a historical continuity. There aren't colonial antagonisms in Britain like there are in America. There's yes, no similar exactly. dynamic. There are national questions. The funny thing is that is th with this logic, the logical extension of this is that empires should finish the job when they displace colonized people. What? That is the logic he's using, you know? That makes no sense. He's, he's advocating for indigenous genocide because he said that because these people still exist, they have a claim to the land. You know, the one who's thinking like an imperialist here is Vorsch because that is a question that imperialists themselves would ask themselves. Like, hey, so I just wanted to pause here and explain in a bit more detail just how dumb what Vorsch said here is. Like he's saying in no uncertain terms that if your land's been stolen, you should not continue to claim it because then that encourages the conquering power to wipe you out, which would apparently be your fault due to your continued insistence that it's yours. That's just straight up victim blaming, right? So let's apply Vorsch's logic here to a well-known modern example, Palestine. According to his logic, Palestinians are responsible for their own oppression, I guess, because they continue to claim the entire land of Palestine rather than just giving it up. You see, they're encouraging Israel to finish the job, as Vorsch put it. There's really no possible good way to spin what he said here. He straight up implied in no uncertain terms that you just shouldn't resist your oppression or continue to claim what was stolen from you because that might inspire a harsher reaction against you. Instead, you should just be obedient and stay oppressed in silence, I guess. Now, this is what immediately came to his mind. Definitely says something about his overall mentality which is clearly a reactionary one when it comes to decolonization. He doesn't actually believe in the logic that he used here in a broader sense, because it contradicts basically every, every other opinion he, ho he holds if we take it to its logical conclusion of don't make yourself inconvenient for your oppressor or you will inspire a harsher reaction, which would then be your own fault. That he is just so ready and willing to completely abandon his supposed principles whenever we, we breach the topic of decolonization and suddenly start ignoring the existence of systemic material issues related to race and the settler indigenous social relation, that he's suddenly so willing to just machine gun off white nationalist talking points. It's clear that his position on decolonization is not rational, at least if it wasn't already clear by his utterly garbage arguments to the, on that respect, but rather an emotional one. And his emotions on the issue are so strong that he just says basically anything to delegitimize the ideas of indigenous self-determination and decolonization, regardless of you know, the lip service that he pays to the overall concept sometimes, like he's like, oh, I'm 100% for decolonization. And then two seconds later, he's out there throwing out white, nas white nationalist talking points to argue against it. You can't really conclude anything other than the fact that he believes wholeheartedly in the legitimacy of the genocidal white supremacist settler colonial US state. And that's why he reacts angrily to any notion that any part of it is not legitimate. Regardless of the so supposedly anarchist ideology that he professes, but never actually advocates for nor practically utilizes, literally never ever, in practice he's pretty clearly just the generic progressive liberal American exceptionalist, at very best. Okay, now on with the rest of this video. Empire should finish the job? How could he possibly think he has a good point here? Indigenous nations should get self-determination, ergo empire should kill all indigenous people? That's what he's saying here. Like, he thinks that this was such a great point that he named an entire section of this video. BM's logic here, Empire should finish the job, he's so dumb. If you half-ass it, and there are still some of them around by the time people get woke to their causes, then you have an issue. But if they're all gone, yeah, then then it's, then it's you can- Vosh is the one who's thinking of, of this here, right? He's thinking here, man, we really should have done that so I wouldn't have to embarrass myself when having these arguments today. Wouldn't that be fucking great for you, Vorsch? Resign them to the dustbin of history, which is an interesting take for, for, for a lefty to take, I suppose. Um, Literally, he's 
Just so dishonest. Attention, it's unbelievable Western. that this guy caused other people bad faith. I can't watch all of this. I'll watch like two or three minutes more. It hurts but, uh, too much. Uh, uh, the, um, the, the argument here isn't really being addressed, though. The only point It that... literally was directly addressed. They have the claim still because they're an actually existing, continuously existing, extant people, undeniably, who still live in the same places that they, parts of their own ancestral lands, or in the parts that they were literally deported to, by the, st by the very same state that is currently depressing them and denying their land rights. It's so simple. What I'm making is that the idea that, like, America belongs to the natives is at once incredibly reductive and outright offensive, I think, to native groups. Literally not. How? Native groups are offended by, by the idea that they should get their land back? I assure you the exact opposite is true. America was split up among hundreds of tribes. Yeah, exactly. And each and every one of them has a very legitimate claim to their ancestral land. What's your point? The, the idea that like, oh, well, you're all, I don't know, dude, you're all like kind of native looking to me, whatever, dude, it's all yours, I guess, would be as offensive as like saying that, uh, literally no one says that no one, no one advocates for some sort of like blanket in Indian sovereignty or whatever. It's the self-determination of each individual nation. Like he's just in inventing an incredibly dumb straw man based on his own personal lack of understanding and attacking it. An African-American here in America has like a shared cultural history in all of Africa. That's basically what you're doing. You could like walk like, hey dude, are you like connected to your African heritage? And this guy whose family has been in America for 250 years, not of their own volition, but still, uh, looks at you and says, what? And you're like, yeah, dude, like Africa. Like, like, do you like know much about your African heritage? Like, it's <laughs> like, it's, it's, God, he's, he's just so dumb. Everything he's saying just completely doesn't apply. I'm gonna listen to one more point that Bad Mouse makes. And we'll see what Walsh responds to it. Is there not a shared experience felt by all Indian nations? You know, when people like uh, Bad Mouse say, my bad, and just like move on from it, it's this is why I don't really trust them. When did he say, my is bad? Is there not a to effect that Native Americans are all of one nation? Uh, my bad, that Native Americans are all of Native Americans. But there's no real colonial dynamic. This is Britain, by the way. Those questions ended many centuries ago. That's why Indian land back is a thing, but I see any land back is not a thing. But I'm pro That's why the plantation of back. Ulster is still a very touchy subject, but the Dononii question is not. One thing I did do wrong in my video was I incorrectly made out that Native Americans are all of one nation. Uh, my bad, I should have said nations. Of By the way, in his original video, he didn't actually do that. He, may he probably said it wrong, but it I, I thought it was clear what he said. He was saying that like there is a shared sort of experience and struggle as I went over a couple of minutes ago or more than a couple of minutes ago at this point, between Native American peoples that sort of unites them in a way, not into one like indis you know, indistinct nation, but like into this sort of um, indigenous settler struggle, the same sort of dynamic. I, I understood that perfectly. And I think the issue here is that people like Vought are just uneducated. So they interpreted it as something different kind of, because they wanted to, because it's an easy gotcha. Of course, I know all that right. American Indians are all of different tribes. What this graphic is trying to showcase is when it comes to effects, when it comes to how the dominant power views them, they're treated as Indian. Is there not a yes. shared experience felt by all Indian nations? Yes, you know, there is. When people like uh, Bad Mouse- He's literally, he's gonna say, oh, he just says my bad and moves on. He didn't just say my bad and moves on. He said my bad and he's explaining himself. He's elaborating on what his point was and you're ignoring it. Say my bad and just like move on from it. It's, this is why I don't really trust them. You know, they make He's these specifically elaborating on his point so that mental midgets like you can understand it and you're ignoring that completely. It's a misunderstanding that is based on your own lack of knowledge, your own lack of understanding, your own lack of comprehension, and you're just going for a cheap little gotcha again. And it, it, they, they, give, they give the impression that they've moved on from it, but I mean, in reality, uh, I, I don't think they've really reflected on it. There cannot be an indigenous camp unless there is a colonizer. I don't say that I'm indigenous to England, do I? Hmm? You see how weird that sounds? Some far-right people like to say stuff like decolonize Europe from all these, you know, migrants and whatnot. And can you not see how this is just so obviously false compared with- You could do that if you wanted to. What? Yeah. If you're- if your fa- your family could have been born in England- He is- he is absolutely about to show us that he has absolutely zero understanding regarding the dynamics of settler colonialism. Like 2,000 years ago or something, right? Wait, how long ago did the- Okay, so there were the- 
It was the the the. Oh sa- my god, he's just so stupid. This guy thinks in terms of what is the dumbest gotcha I could possibly go for right here that would look good to my audience of fourteen year olds whose brains aren't fully developed yet. There's nothing more to this. Saxons and the Romans, right? Well, you, it's possible that your your lineage has been in England for like a really really long time. He's if you straight say- up trying to compare like white supremacists appropriating arguments of indigenous people who are affected by the settler colonial societal societal relation. He's trying to equate these both to delegitimize the indigenous the indigenous people's claim to their land and essentially to legitimize the European um fascist claim claims against immigrants. Vorsch, if you want to talk about someone who uses Nazi fascist talking points. Look at yourself. This is like the fifth or sixth different one that you've that you've used in this whole decolonization debacle. You're indigenous to England. I think that's totally fine. Uh, first, it was the Celts. Okay, gotcha. But like, you could trace that back to England an incredibly long time, right? Same with a ton of places, right? What we consider what we consider to be indigeneity is kind of like a blend between the indigenous colonizer relationship and also an actual description of how far back you can trace your lineage in, in a, you know, in a-, in a No, in, in this context, indigenous specifically refers to this specific societal relation. That's it, nothing more, nothing less. He's applying a different meaning of the term here to try, it, it's like, you know, it's like equating nation in regards to ethnicity with nation in regards to nation state. It's a similar misunderstanding, but you can't expect Vosch to understand these things. Culture. Um, I don't know if there's like a right answer to that necessarily, most people use the term indigenous exclusively in reference to groups that are being oppressed by colonizer groups, usually because we tend to think of it as, um, um, how would I say it? I guess, um, s- sort of like a contrast against the like colonial rule more so than anything else. But, uh, you could, you could agree that people, I'm sorry, this is just gibberish. This, this is obviously nothing interesting to take to take from this there's nothing coherent nothing insightful nothing that even directly addresses what's being said here in this entire video nothing but stupid gotchas and um look i've i've i think i've thoroughly refuted every single little dumb gotcha that he went for here it would be awesome to destroy him on this live but everyone knows that he's terribly afraid of me as i am an incredibly um intimidating alpha male with a large large penis Essentially, any time when Vorsch talks about anything, he like he he constantly vindicates Nazi talking points in an incredibly uncomfortable way, and just like willfully engages in bad faith, ironic because that's his favorite thing to accuse other people of doing, and just directly ignores everything that people say. Watch the ending. What happens at the end? Bad mouse. I've got a content suggestion for you. Okay, boy, do, boy, do I have an idea for you. Okay. You'll have to come to the States, though. Do you live in the States? I feel like everyone lives in the States, okay? What you need to do, okay, we need to bring your ass over to Oakland, like those fucking people from the Channel 5 video, and we need to find you some black people to apologize to, okay? And then when they act really weird about it and say you have nothing to apologize for, accuse them of being pick and find another one. It's gonna be good. It's gonna be a real good one. Oh, and then when they say you're being weird, show them the Baldwin video, and when they act confused, tell them that they're Thunderfoot and then run away. <laughs> Like, he is straight up just willfully misinterpreting everything that Bad Mouse said, which was all completely correct based on materialism, absolutely not based on any sort of mystical notion of black people being special who need to be apologized to or whatever. It was all based on materialism. And here's Vorsch just using, like, ridiculous caricatures which are used by white nationalists against anyone who thinks that racism is bad. Okay, so white nationalist talking points that Vorsch has used in this whole decolon- decolonization debacle. In him embarrassing himself, talking about a very complicated topic that he's clearly unwilling to understand due to his, um, American exceptionalist settler, settler fragility. One. That one right there, that, um, people who dare to talk about, like, the material effects of settler colonialism, and the self-determination of indigenous peoples, black people, whatever, are like, just want to self-flagellate or something. That's a, that's a white nationalist talking point. Two, he's used the white genocide conspiracy theory to spread the idea that indigenous self-determination has some sort of innate um, genocidal component to it. Three, he spe- very specifically spread the white, na- the white genocide talking point regarding South Africa, saying, saying that like, um, decolonization in South Africa that would involve appropriations of um, of land stolen from native South Africans, etc., would essentially amount to ethnic cleansing or genocide, which is a white nationalist talking point. And yeah, he's comparing materially based 
um, anti-colonialism with white liberal guilt, which is not at all the same thing. Yeah, yeah, the whole thing where he's like, just focus on the economy and removing the the racial equation from why the economy in South Africa is the way it is. In a, a very white supremacist sort of thing to do, just to sort of ignore the obvious effect of legally enforced apartheid on that economy and on who holds capital and who doesn't, who's rich and who isn't. And just in general, advocating against decolonization, advocating against indigenous land rights, advocating against indigenous self-determination, not acknowledging the, the historical and the continued existence of the settler colonial societal relation. All of this is characteristic of white supremacy. It's characteristic of white nationalists. If you want to talk about someone being on the side of Nazis, that person is Borsch. Simple. It's not the people who he's arguing with, it's him.